everybody it's Karina with Karina loves to plan welcome back to my channel it is time for my annual fountain pen collection video oops that was my book falling over and basically I held off doing this video for as long as I could because I always have a pen on the way and that's no different now the state of my collection as of December 29th still has one pen on the way it's not complete yet but that's okay i thought you know what i'd film this there's always going to be a pen on the way as we all know so this here is actually an acrylic jar that i got from amazon and then i put the gray pen trays from i'm going to put the name down in the description because i cannot remember the name for the life of me but i enjoy putting my drawer my drawers my pens in these drawers because I love being able to see them. Ideally, I would love to have a Tayoko Craft wood pen case for this, but that is way out of my budget at the moment. But I like it in these and it's kept in my office out of the sunlight because I my office is actually in the basement. So these don't actually see sunlight. They just see the occasional lamp lighting. So I think they're in a pretty good spot. So what I'll do is I'll actually take you through each tray of my collection. But even before you do that, if you want to review what my collection was like a year ago, I'm going to post a picture here with a link to the video from this time last year. And you can see just how different my collection has <laughs> become in the last year. So let's get started. All right. In no particular order, I'm going to just take you through how the pen tray is organized. This time last year, I had organized my pen tray in the order that I had purchased the pen. I feel like I've gone past that point I feel as if I have way too many now in the collection to be able to put it in that perspective so this tray here houses I guess the ones that either have only one of the type of brand or two or three so let's get started on this very and this is actually my newest pen although probably the oldest Geneal genealogically this is a parker vs or a parker slim fold that i received from my secret santa i haven't even inked this up yet but i do plan on inking this up in january and it's got a really lovely lovely nib it actually says canada 55 which i think is great it adds just to that uh it just adds to the meaningfulness of this particular pen and I've tried the nib out and it's so bouncy and soft I can't wait to use it but this is actually if you remove the blind cap here this is a button filler and there's a sack inside that fills the ink so I've spoken to my secret Santa and they say that this actually has been restored so this is good to go I'm very excited to use this so that is my Parker slim fold the next one in the ones where I only have one of that particular brand is the Lamy 2000. I received this, prep, ugh, this pen from Blesket Canada this year, and this was a pen that I had never thought would actually be in my collection. I had seen it, and it was never on my list as a pen that I wanted to have in my collection. But I decided, you know what, let's give it a try. And this pen, if you're not familiar with it, is still wet. <laughs> uh, but it has a piston filler it's got a 14 karat extra fine nib and it's got that hooded nib as well I need to clean this and this 14 karat extra fine nib has a little bit of like an architect edge to it I really love it and this pen is actually so so comfortable in my hand this was a pen that I never thought I would end up owning let alone liking so this was a very surprising addition to my collection but one that I happily happily own and will be keeping for sure so the next one in the I say misfits but it's really one that I only own of I have owned up to three narwhals and I sold the other two this is the narwhal or the Novelor voyage in Tromso and this was something that came out earlier this year it's got the beautiful rose gold metal detailing but it also has the resin from Jonathan Brooks and this is in the abalone and when when did I purchase this this was actually out on Atlas's website for at least a few weeks before I decided to pull the trigger on this and I think what had what had 
what had prompted this purchase. I think it was reaching either 15,000 subscribers on YouTube and I absolutely love this pen. It has a fine nib which writes beautifully and so smoothly. I did experience problems with this pen's piston initially, but after reaching out to Narwhal, they were very helpful in helping me fix this. They sent me a wrench to be able to fix it and now it actually works beautifully. However, that experience has made me very hesitant to purchase any more narwhals in the future. I'm very happy with the one I have and I don't think I need to purchase any more narwhals, but I mean, if I were to own a narwhal or novel or voyage, it has to be this one. It's gorgeous. All right, so moving on to my pilot pens. As you can see, I only own two. I don't need more than that. The first one I'm going to show you is the Pilot Kakuno. And I actually just noticed there's some kind of, there's tooth marks on here from Lucy. Do you see that? <laughs> anyway, and the Pilot Kakuno is a great, great starter pen. This is probably, other than my very first fountain pen, which actually I really need to show you, um, this one is one of the ones that I've had in my collection the longest. It's one of the first pens that I've ever owned. And this one actually isn't anything like the original as I purchased it. This actually has a calligraphy medium nib. You can see that it's got a bit of a stub there. And that nib was actually taken from a Pilot Plumix that I purchased off of Amazon. And then I've also added the Con 70 converter, which is so much better than the Con 40. So this is actually kind of a Franken pen of a Pilot Kakuno, and I absolutely love it. It's a great starter pen. It's one that I don't reach for as often because the calligraphy medium nib is not one that I would use on an everyday basis, but if I had a fine nib on here, this is probably one that I would use as a kind of, I don't wanna say throwaway pen, but throw in my bag type of pen for everyday use. So that is the Pilot Kakuno, and then, my most recent pilot purchase is this pilot vanishing point it represents the 30th anniversary of pilot in taiwan and it is in this beautiful forest green mat it is number should say here 145 out of 600 and it is in a fine nib and oh my gosh if you are familiar with my collection you will know that this came with a little scratch here and I sent this back to Muse Pens and they were able to remove the scratch and send me back the pen and I just love it. The story behind this pen actually is that I was creating my collections or my sticker collections because I also own a sticker shop. I was creating my collections for August and one of the collections was a journaling collection and I decided to draw a bunch of fountain pens and one of them was a green and gold fountain pen. So it's as if I visualized this pen into existence and I'm so happy to have it. I love the matte finish of it and green and gold are also my university colors. So there's a lot of meaning behind this and I do not need more than one vanishing point, no matter how tempting those rotten ones are, I really don't need more than one vanishing point. Although I'm saying that now and I feel like I need to rethink that statement, but no, I only need one vanishing point and it is this beautiful, beautiful green one. Before I move on with the rest of the pens though, there is a pen here that I don't keep in this case because I've actually, I say retired it. It's not one that I use anymore, but it's not one that I will ever sell. This is the Cross Botanica in Green Daylily, and this was my first ever fountain pen. This one was given to me by my dad for Christmas quite a few years ago, and it is a snap cap, and it has, I know this, it says a fine nib, wonderful, wonderful fine nib, so smooth, so wet writing but this pen is just way too narrow and too light for me even when posted it's just too narrow of a pen too uncomfortable for me but i will never ever sell this i will never give this away and it's just a gorgeous pen but unfortunately it's just not a comfortable pen for me to write with but again one that i will never give away so it's what simona calls retired that it's still in my collection but it's not one that i would count necessarily as one that i use on a day-to-day -day basis so then moving to back to the tray here we move to my sailor collection and the sailor collection looks different than it did this time last year 
Last year I had the White Rose Gold as well as the Dragon Palace. I still have the Sailor Pro Gear Slim in Christmas Pudding and this has the 14 karat medium nib, which I love. This nib is so smooth and so wet. Gosh, my noticing cracks. No, that's just where they poured the resin. But oh my goodness, how cute is this pen? And funny enough, I didn't use it for Christmas, but I would use it at any time, any other time of year. And I feel like in January, I could use this with my newest ink, that Diamine Cappadocia. Oh, goodness. But this was a pen that I purchased very, <laughs> very spontaneously. Uh, a friend had said to me there is a company called Gut Gouter in Japan, I believe, that are selling this for a really, really great price. So I jumped on that and that was around, I think, Fountain Pen Day or Black Friday of last year. And I absolutely love the look of this pen. I love the green sparkles. I love the brown. I do not need any more Sailor Pro Gear Slims, however, because they're just bordering on almost too small. Oh, I just noticed that kind of match. Then this one is the Sailor Pro Gear Slim in Monyo Nuts, and this has the 14 karat medium fine nib. This particular pen was one that had come out, I think maybe in November this time last year, and it was one I felt that had sold out quite quickly, but also was at a price point that I didn't feel comfortable spending for another Sailor. And I had resigned myself to the fact that I would not be ever purchasing this one. And then around March, I had seen a couple of videos of other YouTubers who had been able to purchase this because it was back in stock at Goulet Pens. So moving things around, I sold my Sailor Pro Gear Slim and Dragon Palace, as well as my husband helping me out with the purchase of this for my birthday. And now I have a Pro Gear Slim Monyo Nuts. And I do love it. However, the medium fine nib was just not great. It was really, it was scratchy. I didn't like it. It felt like the nibs or the nibs, the line, the tines were misaligned. I had to have Kirk uh, Spear of Pen Realm tune and smooth this for me. And he actually spent quite a bit of time tuning and smoothing this one out of all the pens that I gave him to tune and smooth that day. This one took the longest, but now it writes beautifully. That's only the, that's the only thing with sailors is that with the medium fine, you're with how much you're paying, you really want that nib to be perfect out of the box. And unfortunately that one wasn't, but I don't think I will ever give these two away or sell these. They are the sailors that I absolutely love. I am in the market though. I am looking for another sailor pro gear or a 1911 large. Watch out for that in the future. All right, so the next brand here is Le Bon, and I fell in love with Le Bon, I think it was in really 2022. The first, I think, was the Le Bon Rosa. This was the pen that, for me, started off the I'm buying a pen just because it's pretty phase. And before that, I really was only purchasing pens that were functional. I wasn't buying pens because of how they looked, but this one just got me. So I purchased this and this originally came with a medium nib and it was just too broad for me. So I actually had a Kirk Spear uh, grind this down to about a medium fine and now I absolutely love it. So that is the Le Bon Rosa in Lilac. Immediately after that, I had, or I received this Le Bon 325 in the Cambridge and it's a great big pen. I absolutely love this and it comes with or it came with actually a broad nib but then I decided to get that ground down into a medium stub and it is so great with shimmers and sheening inks but also just the shape of this pen, this cigar shape fits really, really well in my hand. It's a really comfortable pen and that's actually a Yovo nib that's on there. So if I were ever wanting to swap, swap, swatch, swap that out, it actually works really, really well. So this is a really beautiful classic looking pen that's actually not too expensive. And the Le Bon 325 does come in a lot of other colors as well, but I really like the classic look of this Cambridge model. 
And then lastly, out of the Le Bon, this one was, I'm trying to remember where I got this from and I cannot remember, but I know this was available at Yoseka, but I believe I purchased this from a company in the UK and this is the Le Bon Taroko model in the pinnacle uh, colorway. And I really love just the way that that resin looks. It's such, it looks like a vintage pen from the shape of the pen, that cigar shape, but also that resin, it looks very, very classic. There are other models of the, or other colorways of the Taroko, but the Taroko model just comes with, the grip section is just in this black, and I felt like it didn't, the other models colorways didn't really match with that black grip, but the, the pinnacle definitely does, and I really enjoy writing this one with this one. So this one comes with a, I believe it's a fine, it is a fine nib, and I think that nib actually is a Bach nib similar to the Le Bon Rosa. So those are my three Le Bon pens, and that is my first tray. Let's move to the second tray. The second tray <laughs> is all of my hand-turned pens from small makers. I really got into the hand turn pins at the beginning or the end of last year and as you can see it kind of exploded. <laughs> what I love about the hand turn pins is one the one-on-one -on -one communication that you have with the maker of the pen and two every pen is going to look completely different from anything else especially with resins that are poured by different makers, no two resins are going to look alike. Even for example, I'll show you the abalone poured by Jonathan Brooks. It's the same abalone as the one that's on the Narwhal Voyage Tromso, but you can see how different these two look. And that's what I love about the hand turned pens. That's one of the risks though with the hand turned pens is if you are getting them custom made and you're not and you're only seeing the blank before it's turned, you actually don't know what the pen is gonna look like after it's turned. So I'm now really in, in that process of I want I it's hard to buy a resin pen without seeing the finished product, but I've been very, very lucky with the ones that I have. So we'll start from this end here. First here is from F3 Pens. This is the Moonlit Rodden from Jonathan Brooks. And if you remember from last year, this pen looks different from the way it does last year. Last year, it was actually a much chunkier pen and there was a big step between the body and the grip section. And Carl of F3 Pens actually reached out and said, can I, you know, turn that down for you so it's a lot more comfortable? And he did a great job, and I am so, so happy with this because, for one, it's beautiful and it doesn't look like any other Moonlit, Rod Moonlit Rodden that's out there. And two, when he actually turned it down even more, it didn't really change the resin too, too much. So now I've got a pen that's comfortable in my hand and still absolutely beautiful. So that is from F3 Pens in the Moonlit Rodden. The next one purchased was this Cool Tone Primary Manipulation by Jonathan Brooks. And this was turned by Alan of Onawim Woodworks. It has a Bach nib. I think this is the only pen, all of these other pens come with Yovo number no. six nibs. This is the only pen that comes with a Bach nib and it originally came with a medium nib, which I had ground into a stub, but even that I found a bit too broad for me. So I actually bought some Bach nibs from Kirk Spear of Pen Realm and this is an extra fine and it writes so wet and smooth. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous pen. I actually think I have this ink up right now, but it is a beautiful pen in terms of the balance of the swirls, the colors. I absolutely love it. However, I'm getting to that point where the more that I write with it, I'm noticing that that step is right where I'm resting my finger. And after long writing sessions, it actually just, it feels like it's kind of stabbing into my finger. I'm going to keep writing with this for as long as I can because I love the way that this resin looks but we'll see how I feel about this in a couple of months time because as you know comfort for me is a huge part of what brings me joy with these pens if it's not comfortable then it's no longer bringing me joy so 
it it's hard to say that about this pen because it's gorgeous and it feels so good like the body itself feels so good in the hand but that step between the grip and the body mm, i don't know but still so that one is my on a whim woodworks pen in the cool tone primary manipulation next we then have this one a commission by hogtown pens this is in the taper medium model and it is in the resin on the edge of oopsie by tim of turn pen co so tim actually did a resin pour i think on the edge of autumn except this one ended up having a bit too much teal i think and he called it on the edge of oopsie and i love it like if you can see just the shimmer in that swirl I feel that I could almost put any ink in this and it would just match like anything green or red or orange or even blue would match in this pen. And this pen currently has a fine, yes, this has a fine architect nib in it. This is one of the reasons why I love my hand-turned pens is because that Yovo nib makes it so easy to swap nibs around, but also I have a lot more comfort getting a Yovo nib ground versus, for example, a my the nib on my pilot vanishing point ground for example i'm looking at my pens here and i think i mean obviously this whole tray is steel nibs the first tray had one two three four five gold nibs six seven eight oh out of my whole collection i think i only have eight gold nibs that tells you i mean gold nibs are great but they're not the be all and end all of my collection so the next one is also from Hogtown Pens. This is in the Adelaide medium model and the Adelaide model actually has more of a cigar shape. This is in Paris in Bloom by Turn Pent Co. And I got this in the matte finish. I love the matte finish because it just feels so silky in the hand, but also it just shows off a different type of sheen in those colors like look at that and this comes this has a silver or a rhodium bladed extra fine yovo nib which writes writes very very smoothly oh beautiful beautiful so that one is also from hogtown pens the next one <laughs> the next maker i discovered is bart of zodiac pen co i have four of his pens and and Bart is the loveliest, loveliest person to work with. So the first pen that I ever got from him was this Water Lily Koi. It's actually what introduced me to his shop. I was at this one and I think it was the Abalone as well, but I was really interested in the Water Lily Koi and I asked him if he had any of this blank available. And it's one of those blanks where it can turn out really, really well the way that you want it or it can look completely different i love this one so this one is in the virgo model his shop has different pen models based on the different zodiacs hence zodiac pen company and this one is in the virgo model i love the section i love the smoothness of the threads and the smooth transition to the body but how beautiful just is his work and he tried to make it so that the swirls matched up as best as he could and i just can't stop looking at this and this also comes with a yovo nib this one has a fine yovo nib on here and i love this one water lily koi is a beautiful resin by jonathan brooks anyway but it can look so different from one pen to another and i love that you can see the green in here and the, with the white and like it just gets darker here. It's so beautiful and complex. Oh, love it. The next one from Bart is also another Virgo model, slightly smaller, shorter than the last one, but this is also by Jonathan Brooks and this is in the abalone model or abalone colorway. But I mean, just look at that. Sorry, I got distracted by looking at the beautiful resin and this is the thing abalone this particular resin looks so different between different pens between different makers and i just love it i can't stop looking at this pen this one has an extra fine yovo nib and i choose the nib 
whether it's gold or rhodium plated based on how it's going to match with the actual pen so i don't think a gold plated nib would have looked really great on this one i really like the silver the rhodium plated one so that's what i chose for the abalone the next two were a gift from bart so grateful for him i was looking for an arabian nights koi for the longest time and then i also tried a matte finish when i was at the san francisco pen show and fell in love with just the smooth silky feeling of a matte finish pen and he turned this one for me and we put a, an extra fine uh, yovo nib on there but i love the feel of this pen in the hand i believe oh yes this is in the aries model which is my zodiac this is in the aries model so there's slight differences between the aries you can see the aries is actually a little bit girthier than the virgo model and it doesn't taper as much but i love it it feels so good in the hand and it's just the matte finish in this brings out a lot of the sheen in this resin bring it up closer for you because oh my gosh I can, oh my goodness, I'm realizing my ink stains on my fingers, but beautiful. I mean, I think this particular resin would have looked good, matte or shiny, but I just love the feel of the shiny and it's an Aries model, which is me. And then this next one is in the Sagittarius model. And this is in the Carolina Agate from Bob Dupris. And I love this, this looks like you know, an ocean hitting the the rocks of a cliff. Beautiful. This one has a fine Yovo nib, but just so fun. And I feel as if for someone who lives in landlocked Alberta, being able to have a pen that looks like waves crashing onto a cliff and just looks so oceany. I love it. Love it. So those are my four from Zodiac pen company the next two are from just turnings in australia this first one oh boy it is my pastel primary manipulation this one was one i never ever thought i would get because by the time i discovered pastel primary manipulation i had heard that jonathan brooks was no longer making it so to find this was really rare and i remember i woke up one morning and looked on uh, steven or just turning's instagram saw that this had been posted probably half an hour to an hour before i looked at it and immediately snapped it up now there are so many different types of pastel primary manipulations out there this is the thing with any type of resin like this or poured resin by makers is that you can say pastel primary manipulation, but one pen will look completely different from another. For example, Katie's uh, pastel primary manipulation made by F3 pens looks completely different. Hers looks more jewel toned, whereas mine really does look more pastel, but I really love the way mine looks. I had had another pastel primary manipulation by, <clears throat> losing my voice here, uh, Little Pen Designs, and I, ended up selling that one once I found this one because this one is for me the perfect swirls, the perfect combination of all the colors and I just love it. And this is in his Enceladus model. This now has, it has an extra fine nib, but I've had this ground to an architect and I'm so excited to use this. This was just actually returned to me from uh, Jack Hernandez and he has grounded into, it's now an extra fine architect and I'm so excited to use this. So that is the pastel primary manipulation. The next one is a custom pour from Tim of Turned Pen Co. and it's named Swirly Joyful Kismet, which is basically my initials backwards. And Tim worked with me to pour this resin and I feel like it's kind of a foresty floral type of look and then I approached Stephen of Just Turnings to create a pen for me because I love the way that he does the different color finials although I do have the finials in this same 
resin, but I do like the white finials and then I do enjoy his metal detailing. As you can see here, I move into the metal detailing because I really appreciate a good clip. I feel as if that just brings out the pen a bit more and it enhances the pen by having that clip. Not that I use the clip on a day-to-day -day basis, but in terms of the looks of a pen, having the different color finials, but also the clip, I think just enhances the pen even more. Mm. And then the next one is from Heinz Pen. This one was purchased at the San Francisco Pen Show and I fully blame uh, Francisco and Jenny for this purchase and possibly Nadia. I think Nadia was there during that. And I don't even, I don't think they even have a name for this particular pour. I think it was actually part of a subscription box that they had and I think it was from Mackenzie Penworks. They don't have a name for this pour, and I don't know if there's any other pen that has it, but what got me was that this nib, they called it Pepto-Bismol because it's a Pepto-Bismol pink, and it's in an extra fine, and it's so smooth. This one was ground, actually, by Jim Hines himself, but I love this pen. I actually approached their table numerous times and kept picking up this pen until finally Francisco was like, are you going to buy it? <laughs> and I'm so glad that I did, but also... When you get to speak to the makers and you get to speak to the people who are actually helping sell these pens and you create a relationship with them, it just, it, I'm going to say the word enhances again, but it does enhance the overall experience of purchasing the pen. And, you know, for me, this pen also holds great memories as well of the San Francisco Pen Show. So that one is from Heinz Pen. The next one is also from the San Francisco Pen Show, and this one is a huge pen. This one is from Atelier Lusso, and it's in his, I believe, Karina 2 model in the Hepalua with that beautiful abalone. And then the metal detailing here on the clip. This was a pen that I had wanted to purchase from the San Francisco Pen Show. I had done some research on Atelier Lusso beforehand and was ooing and eyeing, uh, basically ogling this particular model. I love the abalone. I mean, it's a much bigger pen than what I'm used to. Uh, and it is a little bit heavier because of just what it takes and what he's done on the inside here to be able to hold all of that abalone. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous pen. So beautifully made. And it does come with a Yobo nib with the Atelier Lusso branding on there. I just love this pen. This pen, what you are paying for with this pen is not the nib. You're paying for the craftsmanship and for the amount of work that it takes to build this pen. Yes, it has a Yovo nib, but it still writes beautifully. And it's a nib that I feel comfortable getting ground. And I just, oh. This whole tray basically represents how I went from purchasing only for function to I went with all the pretty pens. So that is my Atelier Lusso. Oh gosh, I can't, just another one, just another look. There we go. And then I say this is my second, this one is the second last hand turn pen that I purchased this year because there is one still on the way from pens by Casey but this one is from the UK this is by Silver Burl pens and this is in the Strata Quartz this seems to be the the hot resin right now and then I decided to add some silver glitter finials just to zhuzh it up a bit and then John does some beautiful clips as well I thought that this design went really well with the strata quartz to make it very marbly and have that effect. Now, Katie as well has a pen in this same, I guess, resin and same blank, but ours look completely different. Hers is the Nano, no, Nano, Nona model, Nona model, and Nano model, never mind. And hers has the different facets, whereas mine is the smooth silver series because I do like the pen body to be quite smooth. And this comes with a Yovo nib. It's currently inked up actually with diamine dusted truffle. And this has an extra fine nib. 
such a beautiful pen and I, I can't say any more about it. Like this is the thing with the hand turned pens as well is that if it's built well, it will write well and then you've got yourself a, a piece of art, a beautiful piece of art. So those are my hand turned pens. You can see I went a little crazy this year. So let's move to the last tray. Ta-da! <laughs> the last tray. I don't even know where to start with this tray. I think I'll start from here and go to here. So this, the first three here are Pelican. And here I have my Pelican 140. This was the first vintage pen that I ever purchased. And if you are ever wanting to get your foot in the door with vintage pens, I highly recommend the Pelican 140. I purchased this off eBay and it works beautifully. It's actually a very well functioning pen. It is a smaller pen, but it's got a fantastic 14 karat nib. And if you're going to start with vintage, I highly recommend this because this one is almost an easy one. It, You don't have to worry about any sacks, like sack filling mechanisms or anything like that this is still a piston filling mechanism it's got the transparent body so you can see how much ink is in there it's a great great introduction to vintage pens so that is the pelican 140. and then this is the year that i tried out the pelican m800 at the san francisco pen show so once i tried out that model i knew that that size was for me so i ended up purchasing the m800 from atlas stationers i'm going to say that a lot of my collection now as it stands was made possible through my affiliate credit at atlas stationers but also just oh my goodness my my sticker shop for you guys supporting my sticker shop so and I have to say, without the Atlas affiliate credit, this purchase would not have been possible in the time that it took. So that that affiliate credit really helped me purchase this pen a lot sooner than I thought I would have. So this is the M800 in the black green. Now this is a newer model, so the body is not transparent, but it still has that beautiful two-tone 18 karat nib in the extra fine. And this extra fine, a lot of people say does write like more of a western fine close to a medium but i love it love it this pen fits so perfectly in my hand it's so beautiful and classic looking i don't post it because i don't normally post my pens but i just love it it's so classic looking and beautiful and i just mm, 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 love it that then led to the purchase of my grail pen the M800 in the brown black and I fully blame Lori of Time with Tata. She I believe had just purchased one but I also know that Kristen of Life Inspired Designs also purchased one at the San Francisco Pen Show and I had been looking on eBay. I'd always had one on my watch list. I'd had one I think on my watch list for about 18 months and then decided couple of months ago to pull the trigger and I ended up selling my M400 in the white tortoise and the M605 in the green white stripes to fund this pen and just look at this beauty. This the light in the video is making it look more brown than normal but oh my gosh and it has a fine nib that I had ground into a cursive smooth italic by Jack Hernandez and it is so slicey and smooth so fun to write with and I just I just want to ink this up all the time. It's a classic looking pen and it just works beautifully. Mm. So that is my M800 in the brown black. This was also the year that I got introduced to the Estes, as you can see here. So before this year, I had never pulled the trigger in purchasing an Estabrook Esty because I was one of those people who thought, what is the big deal? They're just pretty pens with a Yovo nib. What is the big deal? And then I won a giveaway. When did I win this? I can't remember the exact date of the giveaway. And I won the Nouveau Bleu, Nouveau Bleu, with the fine nib. And I tried it and I'm like, okay, I understand why this pen is so hyped. It fits beautifully in the hand. Those Yovo nibs write so, so well. I was hooked. 
I love this pen and it was so comfortable to write with. This is the pen that I compare all other pens to when it comes to comfort level. So once I got this in my collection, I immediately purchased the Rainforest and I actually purchased this off of Reddit and this one has actually an extra fine, no this side, sorry, has a fine nib that I had ground to a cursive smooth italic by Jack Hernandez as well. And this is the great thing about the Estherbrook Essies. They do have their nib, um, their personalized, personalized, their different nibs in terms of they actually sell these on their pen. So they have their scribe nib, their journaler nib, their needle point, as well as their techno nib. I've tried a couple of those. Some of them just don't fit my writing style. So I'm still happy to get these ground personally for me. So this one is a cursive smooth italic. My next one that I, if I do get another Estherbrook SD, I wanna get it in an extra fine so I can get that ground down into a cursive smooth italic because I love the line variation. So this is the Rainforest and it is just stunning. And then the next one I purchased was Petrified Forest. I couldn't decide between this or Cola, but I'm so glad I got this. I mean, I would have been happy with the Cola as well, but then that sold out. So I said, all right, then we're getting Petrified Forest. And this one has an extra fine nib. Ooh, it's a little wet in there, but an extra fine nib. What I also love about the Estherbrook Estes is the cushion cap closure. So it makes sure that the, the ink stays wet within the nib. Oh, how beautiful is that? This is the thing that I love about the Estherbrook Estes. They are beautiful and between each of the sizes, they are consistent. So I know that they're going to fit well in my hand. They're going to be comfortable. And with those Yovo nibs, they're going to write well. And then the last Estherbrook SD that I purchased this year was the Honeycomb. This was not, this particular resin was not on my list, but when I saw it at the Pelican Hub in September and I saw this in person, I thought, yeah, I need to get it. It's just stunning, absolutely stunning. And then I got this with the Needlepoint nib as you can see that the NP and the needlepoint nib is the specialty nib done by Kirk Spear of Pen Realm, and I love it. I've tried the fine nib on a platinum before. I didn't like that, but I really love this. I do use really wet inks in here, but I do really love it. It's so, it's smooth yet slicey because it is so Thin. Oh, love it. So those are my four Estherbrook Estes. Will I be purchasing more? Never say never. <laughs> I probably will. I know that there is a white Estherbrook SD that will be released sometime in 2024. I'm still open to botanical gardens. I'm at that place in my collection where I'm okay with the number that I have and it's not giving me a ton of anxiety having the number that I do have. I, I'm at that point as well where I have found a pen that really, really works for me. And if I can swap nibs around, great. But if I see another colorway that I really like, I'm not gonna be telling myself that I can't have it. Because when you tell yourself that you can't have something, then you're gonna want it more. But anyway, the last brand that I'm going to show you here is Leonardo. Leonardo was a pen that I was introduced to this time last year, and that was used through the Angel Skin pen. I'm actually going to close that piston here. So the Memento Zero Grande 2.0 in Angel Skin was my very first Leonardo. This was, wow, this was a purchase that I did not do too much research on. I wasn't sure of the size. I, this one was purchased really just because it was pretty and I had the pen chalet credit for it, but also it was on sale. So a pen that would have cost about 440 MSRP, I got for about a hundred dollars because of the sale and because of my credit. So yeah. <laughs> and this pen initially was one that disappointed me but I decided to keep it and keep working with it and keep trying with it. And now I love it. I love writing with it. It has a 14 karat rose gold fine nib and it writes so beautifully. And it's just a stunning pen. 
it's just a stunning pen now the memento zero grande size the grande 2.0 size is not a size that i will probably buy again but if i'm to own a memento zero grande i'm glad it's this one so then i ended up trying the memento zero size at the san francisco pen show but i didn't purchase that first the first one i purchased after that was the furore model in the aqua petra and i purchased this off of reddit i believe it was and this is a gorgeous pen it has a fine nib that's actually been tuned by annabelle of apple bomb and it's such a comfortable pen very comparable to an estabrook sd the only difference is that there is a tiny little bit of a step there and this is also a cartridge converter i didn't mention that in a lot of these pens what the filling system was so i do apologize for that but this is the cartridge converter and I'm just in awe of how beautiful that resin is, but also it writes amazingly, really, really writes well. That fine nib is so smooth. It's been tuned perfectly to the wetness that I like and the smoothness that I like. So this is the Leonardo Furore in Aqua Petra. The next Aqua Petra that I got was actually from Muse Pens, and this is in the, oh my gosh, what is, Ginger. This is in the Ginger colorway which looks very similar to Petrified Forest. And then I realized this is actually the same resin that the Estherbrook SD Cola is made out of. So I was happy to get this resin in the Ferrari model because I, I find the Ferrari model very comfortable as well. This one also has a fine nib and it's just a beautiful, beautiful writer. So comfortable in the hand. This actually currently has Diamine Ink Vent Celebration in it, and it's, I do not hesitate to put shimmers into my fine and extra fine nibs, so keep that in mind. So that is the Furore and the Ginger. And then the next two, oh boy. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to purchase a Leonardo Memento Zero model after trying them at the San Francisco Pen Show but there wasn't one in particular that really took my breath away and then Stilo and Stile did a little teaser of what their exclusives were going to be and as soon as I saw those teasers I said to myself those need to be mine because they are exactly what I was hoping for in terms of a Memento Zero. I'm going to show you this first one here. This is in the Andromeda model, Andromeda colorway, sorry, in the Memento Zero model. And this has an extra fine nib. That's all I could snatch up. I wanted a fine and they sold out. So I got an extra fine and it actually writes really well. And I love the look of this resin it does actually look like the it looks like a galaxy and look at all those stars so this one is polished it's beautiful it's shiny but the one that really really did it for me that was my ultimate purchase was the memento zero in the via latea or the milky way so this features that same resin that strata quartz material but this is in matte Oh, if I didn't already want this material, the fact that they made it in a matte finish just clinched it for me. I had to have it. I spent a good hour pretty much on an emotional roller coaster trying to purchase this pen and the Andromeda as well and their website kept crashing, but I'm so thankful that I was able to purchase one in an extra fine. And this one is actually inked with Diamond Ink Vent Yule Log currently, and it works beautifully, but also it just is stunning. It feels beautiful in the hand, and I'm so glad that the Leonardo Memento Zero that I purchased were these two, that I waited for these two to come out, and I am in love with them. Whew, that is a lot of talking. So there are, gosh, how am I gonna organize this one tray? There are all of my pens currently. <laughs> this is going to be a balancing act. Oh my gosh. Those are all of my pens in my collection as of December 28, 
2023. If you guys have any questions about any of these pens, please let me know in the description or in the comments below. Are any of these surprises to you? What do you think of the growth of my collection since this time last year? Once again, thank you all so much for watching and for continuing to support my channel. Without you, many of these pen purchases would not be possible without your support through purchasing through Atlas, through supporting me in my sticker shop, through using the pen chalet code down below. All of your support means so, so much to me. So thank you once again for listening to me ramble. I hope that you were able to sit down with a cup of coffee or a drink, no judgment, a drink to be able to watch this video. And we'll see what the next year brings in terms of my collection, whether it looks exactly the same, I highly doubt it, or if it looks worlds different to this. Thank you again so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.